adjustments um, to the agenda for instance we're going to skip the approval of the meeting minutes until the end and we will uh, give the floor to um, Chief Gaudet he's got a couple of recommendations he'd like us to consider I do so we'll start with the lieutenant's position uh, a little background for those on TV here that don't know anything about it over here Be better. behind the podium right you're not in the, the easiest, but okay. you're on you're on I television. Just, I just feel like it blocks my. Did you forget to go to hair and makeup? I did. Was there such a thing? Was it downstairs? <laughs> so we've had a lieutenant's position on the books for a long time, just as we've had corporal's positions in the contract for a long time that have never been filled. Very similar to the detective's position that we just codified with the select board last year in the contract. Um, Chief Chamberlain was, for mo all practical purposes using me in a lieutenant's position, doing some extra work during the day, things like that. This past January, a year ago, he assigned me to an administrative schedule, Monday through Friday, working with him side by side, which was effectively a lieutenant's position. Uh, we had talked about putting it forth years ago, we never did. Uh, with Chief Chamberlain's departure, the difference between my pay, his pay, the budget, uh, it felt like the, the opportune time to put a position into effect um, where it requires no further appropriations, we have good staff, and the ability to work side by side with somebody on a day-to-day -day basis fills in a lot of gaps that the rotating four and two schedule that I was on previously didn't necessarily give the opportunity for. Um, when I was here six months ago, we talked about whether or not you would appoint somebody if I brought them forward. We had two patrolman's positions to fill with Chief Chamberlain's departure, Detective Johnson's departure, and then we had to run a sergeant's exam process, which, which took quite a lot of time, and Sergeant Ferguson was the first candidate from that, um, and then I posted the lieutenant's position last. Um, Sergeant Fugere is interested in the position. He's worked with me for the last six months on essentially what I was doing the prior six months, so no operational uh, changes to the department will be made. I can't say enough good things about how Steve has uh, worked with me over the last six months. Um, in this position, he'll be in charge of all training. The whole new Police Standards Reform Act is a significant burden on all the departments, the requirements involved, the record keeping, he'll be involved in that. Uh, the majority of the grant work, and then we'll send him to some of the internal affairs classes to, to specialize in that also. Uh, it gives an opportunity for, in addition to my moving up, it brings as many people as possible. Uh, Steve, to two sergeants and then uh, Detective Chase was also to move up. So part of my goal moving to Chief was to bring as many people in with me as possible. And like I said, with the budgetary concerns, now is the, the opportune time. Um, so other than that, I don't think I have a whole lot to say unless you have any questions. We hashed a lot of it over last time. Um, like I said, there's no budgetary things. There'll be no operational changes other than uh, I believe Sergeant Ferguson will end up on day shift with us again. Um, but other than that, it's going to be exactly like we've been running for the last 13 months. It's worked really well, and I can't see any reason why it wouldn't continue to work well. I think it's a great future for the department. Okay. Um, are you chomping at the bit there as far as budgets, Mr. King? No. You're all set? Okay. Can we hear from Officer Fujeri? Tell the general public and the people in this room a little bit about yourself, Stephen. Uh, yeah, so my name is Steve Fugier. I've been with the department for almost 17 years now. The last four have been as a sergeant on the uh, night shift. When the chief cadet got promoted, that brought me on the day shift since August, beginning of August. Uh, like you said, I've been working kind of side by side with him in uh, more of an administrative role since I uh, since I came to the day shift. So um, I've had my entire career has been in Sterling. I started here when I was 21 years old. Like I said, I'm almost uh, coming up on 17 years now. Um, basically, my, uh, my big draws in the department are uh, I do a lot of training. 
I'm heavily involved in training within the department and within the state. I work as a uh, lead drill instructor for Police Academy in Fitchburg. Um, so that's kind of my, my forte is in the, the training aspect. So given the opportunities uh, to move up into the lieutenant role and kind of take that over and, and uh, leave my imprint on that, I think is, is a good fit for me. And I look forward to, uh, to fitting into that role and, and uh, benefiting the department of the town and the citizens of the town in that role. Any questions, John? I just, no, not, not a lot, just a couple of minor ones, uh, Steve. Um, I just was wondering, uh, what will be the focus? Of it? How much grant uh, application work will there be? Will there be more? Or you, will there still be, I see we did obtain three grants over the last three years. Uh, how will the role change? I'm just curious for the so moment where, where, where a lot of the hours will go right now. So there'll be a little bit more time to kind of dive into the, the grants. So right, right now I'm writing a grant, or running a grant uh, for municipal uh, road safety, and it is pretty time consuming. Yep. And my role on the day shift as the supervisor is I'm still like a street supervisor, so there's times that I'm getting called out um, for just your regular sector calls or uh, normal calls around town. Uh, this will kind of put me in more of an administrative role where it'll give me more of an opportunity to do that and apply for, for more money. But I've, I've been pretty heavily involved in grants um, for a long time. It's something that, that I enjoy, that, that I like doing. Um, so I've been pretty active with those, but I think it'll give me more of an opportunity to apply for more grants that, with a little bit more time to implement them and to spread them out across the, the uh, course of the year. That's a good thing. Good thing for our town. Yeah. A little tedious, I would think, yeah. at times. But I mean, uh, will this impact your role as uh, the, the lead instructor up at uh, Fitchburg State University? Yeah, definitely. It'll take more of my time um, because it's, a, it's an administrative position. Uh, the academy runs Monday through Friday, so it'll definitely impact that. So I won't be able to be as involved up there as I was before, as, as I would like to be. But um, yeah. that's just that's part of part of the job. It's, I knew that I was never going to be able to stay up there for the remainder of my career, just with upward movement and progression in my, <coughs> in my career. So yeah. um, I'd love to stay there as much as I could. But yeah, I thought it was kind of fun. You know. Yeah, it was great. I was, I was involved in five classes of recruits that are working from as far west as the Berkshires and all the way in, right outside of Boston and in the Cape. So yeah. I, uh, I've met a lot of recruits and trained a lot of recruits from all over the state. So it was rewarding. So you'll still be involved somewhat with that though, I imagine. Yeah, yeah I'll, still, I'll still have some involvement yeah. with it, but I unfortunately won't be able to be as involved as I was before. When I was working the overnights and a rotating schedule, it was a lot easier to, to be up there at the academy and, and, uh, yeah. and helping out with uh, now I'm on day shift. It's, it's definitely it's a lot harder, so. Yeah. Yeah. David? Uh, no question, just a statement that, uh, you know, I know Chief Chamberlain and uh, Sean have been working to get this position filled. Um, like Sean said, it was uh, it was voted at 2002 uh, town meeting and just never funded. Right. Now uh, the stars seem to be aligned so that the position can be funded uh, without any impact, major impact to the budget at this point in time. So, um, no, I, I think it's a welcome position and it's uh, it's uh, it's good for the department and it's a natural evolution for uh, the, where the town is headed. So, uh, nice job all you guys making this happen. What's really nice is to see the support that you're getting from your fellow officers being here and to that, that speaks very well of you. I have my own opinions, as you know. <laughs> Same as uh... <laughs> I told him I was going to embarrass him, but I won't. <laughs> All right. So um, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the appointment of uh, Steve as police lieutenant. So yes. moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Go coin, aye. Smith, aye. Grants and aye. Thank you, Stephen. And <laughs>
Okay, and do you have something else for us, Sean? Yes, ma'am. So, with that, that leaves a vacant sergeant position. Um, pending any contract negotiations with Steve and Bill, I think we have it pretty much worked out anyway, but just pending any any, any problems that run into it, uh, I'd like to recommend Tim Pluff, Officer Pluff. He's been with us 20, 21 years. He's a sterling success story. He's been here in town his whole life. He started with us as a part-time dispatcher, part-time patrolman, full-time patrolman. Um, and again, we had a significant sergeant's position uh, exam assessment center, and Tim was number two on that behind Ryan. Um, and based on all those, I would recommend you point him to this vacant sergeant's position pending the negotiations with Bill and Steve. Okay. Tim, you want to address the general public? Sure. Of course, he just stole everything I was say. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Tim Pluff. I've been a lifelong resident for 46 years of the town. Um, every time I come into this building, it's a flashback because, uh, believe it or not, it was a school at one point and I attended second grade and I sat right there. So, uh, but no, no kidding, I sat literally right there in second grade, uh, Mrs. Bisnett. But um, like I said, long, lifelong resident. My parents, um, also lifelong residents, still live in the town. Um, their, their parents, lifelong residents, uh, since passed on. Um, my wife also attended the school, uh, Butterick, when it was a school. Um, like Sean said, been a uh, police officer for the uh, department for 21 years. Um, started off part-time dispatch. Didn't know if I was going to be a police officer at that point. But um, it just kind of grew on me. And you, you end up liking the, the job in that way. And so I progressed into full-time dispatch, part-time officer, and then full-time officer. And um, I've been um, firearms instructor, Milo instructor, BT instructor. I was a um, child safety technician for 12 years, um, and you've seen me at all the all the functions for over the years: Davis Farmland, Heroes Day, and Public Safety Day. If, if there was an event that involved the community, I was there. Um, uh, one thing I want to say about this town as a resident: um, I think um, I feel very lucky to be in this town um, as a resident. Um, you have. Uh, all these officers over the last year and a half coming and seeking this department and I think it says a lot about the community, the management, select board, and the department itself to have all these officers come here, um, uh, leave their respective department, re leave their respective town, and start at the bottom just to come to this town, Sterling. I think it's a credit to, to everyone in this room here as well as the community. That, that sort of thing is happening when it's not happening in, other, in any other town. And I'm just really proud to be a part of that. Tim, how do you, how do you see your role? I mean, you know more about it than I do, kind of the same question, uh, and I'll answer Steve, but how, how, how will this differentiate your role administratively versus uh, actually being out in the community? Um, I, I, I was uh, acting sergeant for several months, um, so I got kind of used to the, the role that that uh, undertook with payroll and um, uh, filling shifts and uh, so that type of thing I am pretty much used to because even when I wasn't acting sergeant, being on the night shift, um, I was officer in charge for half the, half the week. So. Um, I don't think that impacts too, too much. I, I think um, I'm excited for the ability to then uh, go to the staff meetings and voice my opinion a little bit more and maybe get a little bit more involved in the uh, community policing um, aspect. Well, thanks. It just, I mean, Chief wrote up, but did a nice job with the write-up, uh, you know, preparing us for this tonight anyway. So it really is, a, I think, a well-thought-out succession plan, uh, you know, as David said, you know, and it just puts it in in writing how it's working, and it is working. It's a position that was funded, well, the other one was funded back in 2002, but now it's, as he said, the stars are more aligned right now uh, for these positions to be filled, so. And your background, 2116, I mean, there's, there's no more question about the background, the experiences you guys have had, so, I mean, I think, I think we're lucky, very lucky to have you guys, so, I'm, I'm well set by David? Uh, <clears throat> Tim took, uh, took the words I was gonna um, present, uh, it, it's. I was going to say, you know, what a what a great reflection on the department that we have so many members uh, that have been here for years and years, and we're going to continue with their career here. You know, I, I work in the municipal world, and I see people come and go, and it's quite a rare thing we have going on here. And uh, it's just a 
it's a tribute to your department and, and to the town. So I, I appreciate everything you guys do. I really do. So thank you. Thanks. I've known you since <laughs> as well. So uh, yeah, I love seeing everybody being having the ability to step up. You know, starting way back with Ryan. You know, it's it's good to see, um, and it just makes the department that much more complete. Um, and like I said earlier, I love seeing all the support that you gentlemen give each other. It's it's like a very positive thing. So. With that, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the appointment of uh, Jim to Sergeant's position. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Kill Corn and I. Smith and I. France and I. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't thank uh, <laughs> Chief, Chief Barab, I thanked him multiple times, but I just wanted to thank him. So thank Congratulations, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, gentlemen. See you thank again. You guys. Take thank care. You. Good luck. So we're going to do a little shuffling, as I said earlier, with the agenda. Um, some things are going to take a little bit longer, so we're going to skip right down to uh, the flag rentals request. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi. Hi. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, we're going to get up there? Oh, you bet. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joanne Flag Osgood. And um, I work with my brother Steve with the uh, Flag RV rentals that we do out of your town. Okay. And uh, this has already been approved by the ZBA, followed all the rules, etc., and so on. So, um, you yeah, the special permit has been granted um, to do the sales. There is a modification hearing going up next week for the storage of their RVs over the winter, I think. Okay. Okay, that was an oversight, I believe, um, by the CBA initially. So, uh, do we the, need to do anything with that? Uh, you would have to check with. Um, you could check with Patty down. She's the uh, ZBA administrative assistant, so you can check with her. Okay. Uh, but I think it's just uh, verbiage <coughs> that they have to fix. Okay. <coughs> Steve would probably know about that. Yep. All right. Yeah, I mean, if all the proper. Uh, Permits and all the proper uh, other boards and committees have been notified and involved, especially zoning. Then uh, and it's up on Greenland Road, right, one forty-five. Yep. Yep. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't see any problem with it. David, uh, my question, just a question, is how many units approximately would be stored on site? Um, I would probably have to just call him and ask him, just because I don't know how many he plans on. But he said he's available. And to just call to my pocket. So this is just storage in general, or yeah, at any one point in time. I mean, is that's it, actually in the um, directions the from the ZBA. Okay, I the, think there were for the uh, porta potty sales. It was two model units, and then whatever comes in is going out. So it'd be temporary, and I think it was ten or twelve RVs. That sounds right. Yeah. You don't need to call. Okay. It is. I just didn't know if he had any plans of anything that Thank I you. wasn't sure of. It's outlined in the permit. Okay. The CBA. I do know well, that. I, I know. You know, as long as all the uh, all the committees have, have approved this. Yep. Yeah. Fine with it, so. Yeah. Light industrial works. Yep. Yeah. So I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve um, flag rentals slash auto dealership, not quite sure why it falls under that, but I'm not ZBA. No, uh, so moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Point I. Smith I. Grants and I. All right, thanks Sharon. I would check with Patty if he has any more questions okay. down in. She's actually in the building department office. Okay, I will. Tuesday, no, Monday through Thursday. Something okay. along those lines. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay, happy new year. 
Um, okay, we didn't do that. Restitute. All right, and then road race. Da da da. -da. Uh, sir, are you here for anything in particular, or? No. Okay. All right. Um, just because the next one might be a little bit long. Okay. <laughs> okay. Stay awake over there. Stay quiet. <laughs> oh, you can speak. Be I have no problem with you speaking. <laughs> it's uh, just that we have um, Steve from the, the our town planner. He's going to come up and give us some info as far as what his work plan is. Um, Stephen, you want to get to the pa uh, the patio? Huh? Daddy if we had one. We built a balcony out there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Why not? And they're doing a roof. Oh, the <laughs> well, good evening, Select Board. I'm your new town planner, Stephen Wallace. And as is my practice, at the start of every calendar year, I meet with the Select Board and I brief them on what I'm proposing as a work program for the upcoming calendar year. So that's one of the reasons I'm here. Um, I'm going to go through this list. There's 13 items on here, uh, but as you know, things will come up over the year, as they always do, so um, I'm sure this list will get supplemented as time moves forward. Um, first thing I want to do is update the town's floodplain zoning bylaw to the state standards. Um, I'm going to do that over the course of this year. Your new federal flood insurance rate maps will be issued by December of this calendar year. Um, and in order to use them, you need to adopt the state's um, zoning code for um, flood-prone areas. Now, I have a draft bylaw already. I need to review it with the building commissioner since he's going to be the one enforcing it. Then we'll have town council take a look. Um, but I anticipate bringing that to the town meeting, annual town meeting, May 2024. Second item is work with the planning board to prepare a new multifamily zoning overlay district that will comply with the state zoning require requirement for MBTA adjacent communities. As you know, the state has designated Sterling as an MBTA adjacent community. Um, simply because we abut Lemonster and they have a train station. And in the wisdom of the state legislature, they decided that all of the MBTA type communities needed to have multifamily zoning by right. Now, how do you do that in a town with no municipal sewer? So, um, we are looking at some areas in the north of town um, in close proximity to uh, the Northgate 40B project. We're looking at properties on North Row Ra Road. Um, we're looking at properties that the sewer line could be extended to. Um, if someone ever wanted to build multifamily housing out there. Stephen, does uh, Northgate not count for us at all? Um, we're including it in the district to say that we've already got some, yeah. but we can't count it towards the 156 units that the state says we need to have enough land for. Seriously? Yes, ma'am. And that's come down considerably from the first iteration of the state guidance. Okay. Yeah. I'll go with no comment. <laughs> and the other part of that is uh, without no. having that, it does hold um, some grant programs, MassWorks, right, in particular. Well, that's that's the kicker. Um, for 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 towns that don't adopt the multifamily zoning requirement, they are no longer eligible 
for a variety of state grants, one of them being MassWorks Infrastructure Grant, which we're planning on availing ourselves to for the downtown project. Hopefully at some point. Yeah. So we don't have to find a builder and have them actually build it. We need to create the possibility. And we'll be doing it through an overlay district, essentially adding multifamily zoning, uh, multifamily housing as one more use allowed <coughs> for this particular area. Okay. And we'll be defining that area over the course of the year with the help of the Regional Planning Commission. That's the second item I want to talk to you right. about. We'll get there. All right, third on the list, um, work with the Planning Board and the Zoning Board on some zoning amendments for the upcoming town meeting in May. Um, we want to add the various types of kennels to the zoning bylaws table of uses. Last year's town meeting, you saw the adoption of the various definitions for kennels, um, but the Animal Control Board's proposal for adding them to the table of uses was defeated. Um, since that time, I've convened a meeting with Planning Board membership, Zoning Board membership, Animal Control Board membership, and we came to agreement on where to allow the uh, commercial type kennels and under what circumstances by right versus a special permit. Uh, the only one where we, come, we couldn't come to agreement on is personal kennels. Planning Board and the Zoning Board are willing them to allow them in the commercial and rural residential by special permit and that's it. Um, but the Animal Control Board wants them allowed by right. So we're going to move forward with this zoning amendment in the hopes that you'll support it as well so that we can go to town meeting with the planning board, zoning board, and select board in support of this. I know the animal control board uh, won't speak in favor of this, but their proposal for how to zone for kennels got shot down last year, so they've had their chance. All right, um, we're going to make some minor adjustments to the uh, zoning bylaws accessory dwelling unit provision. Apparently the zoning board has been getting um, proposals for detached or accessory dwellings in detached buildings that are essentially turning them into full-blown single-family homes, uh, two of them on one lot. So we're going to amend the language there. And the last thing is repeal the zoning bylaws temporary moratorium on adult use marijuana. That's no longer needed. Um, the citizen petition that got adopted at a town meeting about three years ago where you limit such uses to the one that you already have in town uh, that was legally adopted according to town council and um, we don't need to fiddle with that one, but we should take away the temporary moratorium because it's no longer necessary. Uh, fourth, um, I'd like to take a crack at revising the standards for the performance zone and the table of uses for uh, your commercial and industrial uses. Um, it needs to be updated, modernized, and expanded. Um, this is going to be a significant undertaking that's going to take involvement from the Economic Development Committee um, and the general public. There's going to be, an, uh, we're going to need to do a, a fair amount of public outreach so that the public understands what we're doing and why, and why um, economic development is a tax winner for the town. Um, we there's been a cost of community service study done for this town by the American Farmland Trust. Uh, it was about 10 years ago, 10 to 12 years ago by now. Um, but their findings 
are in line with CASA community service studies done all over the country. And in Sterling's case, for every dollar generated by commercial and industrial development, it costs the town 26 cents to service it. So we need to make the case that economic development in the performance zone is a tax winner for the town. We just need to agree on what uses to allow there. So I don't have a timetable for that. It's going to be ready when it's ready. This is not the kind of thing you want to rush. Uh, fifth, I'm going to work with the Economic Development Committee to prepare a promotional map slash brochure that will advertise the, the town's local businesses, farms, recreation areas, historic resources, uh, special places. Um, that'll be something that we can have as a map that we can hand out to visitors and, and newcomers alike. And it'll be something we can post on our <coughs> town website. Uh, we've been chugging right along with the Economic Development Committee on that project. And we should be able to have something by the fall. Um, work with the Open Space Committee to plan for new trails here in Sterling and links to neighboring communities. Uh, you've got a fairly energetic open space committee. Um, I have a fair amount of experience in trail planning, and they're excited to take advantage of that. Uh, we're going to be meeting with Wachusett at Greenways in early February um, to look at some impediments we need to deal with before we can extend our rail trail north into Lemonster. So that'll be an ongoing task. I'll also be working with the town administrator to prepare a database of earth removal permits and projects. Uh, we'll work on that in the spring and the summer. I'd also like to review the town-owned property list to see if the town owns any properties that might be suitable for either affordable housing or senior housing. Um, I got a phone call this afternoon from uh, a senior living in town who's at her wit's end in terms of trying to find affordable housing yeah. in this area. Um, Yeah, it's a tough nut to crack. Well, it's... it's and, you know, and I ran into this in Westminster as well. S seniors who, uh, their families moved out, the, the, their partners deceased, and they've got too much house and to pay taxes on. They would love to downsize and stay in town, but there's nothing for them. Um, so I want to take a look at your town properties and see. It's been a conundrum for a while now. Yeah. We've talked about it um, when we did the master plan, um, and obviously uh, the EDC has talked about it in the past. And if we could find something, it would be... The thing is, if we have senior housing and these people that live in town that want to downsize and want to go into senior housing or tiny houses or whatever, then they sell their house to another couple that comes in and keeps keeps the um, population going, really. Yeah. You know, we'll end up in some of these towns where the, and right now, Sterling is at the point where our senior population outnumbers our student population. It's the fastest growing segment of your population, right. your senior population and your soon-to-be senior population, yeah. 45 to 64. Um, so I'd, I'd like to do something on that. 45? <laughs> soon, Jesus. soon. So you'll be able to move in. 45 and 64. That's the, that's the upcoming seniors. That's how they define it. Well, Bill would like to design his own unit if you don't mind. <laughs> Holy Jesus. So that makes me uh, ancient. If we can find a property that's suitable, I know that... Um, uh, Massachusetts Housing Partnership will work with us uh, for free to help move this to the point where 
the state will fund the project. Beautiful. So let's do it. Yeah. Can that get done by spring? Do you think? Well, seeing it took us eight years <laughs> in Westminster, that might be an ambitious timetable. How many units did they put up there, Steve? Uh, they're going to build 50. They break ground this spring. Yeah. Okay. Eight years, huh? Yeah. Eight years to split off the lot, get it surveyed, choose a developer. Um, it took three, three rounds of applying for funds before the state finally funded us. So. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna work with the conservation agent to host an interdepartmental meeting to review the storm, the, the town's new stormwater management permitting system. I don't really understand it. Your DPW director doesn't really understand it. Um, we'd like to get a handle on it so that projects that come before us comply with the stormwater permitting system. So we'll do that over the spring. I'm sure your conservation, conservation agent will set us all straight on that. Uh, the big thing you hired me for is to continue to manage the planning board's caseload on a day-to-day -day basis. And that includes fixing a lot of the problems that were created from decisions made long ago. Um, uh, and, and that's in addition to dealing with people who come into town and want to know how to develop. So, well, well, that'll be an ongoing task. I'm going to continue to participate in the Regional Planning Commission's Brownfield Steering Committee and Comprehensive Economic Development Committee. I'm going to continue to search out grant opportunities and share them with you as I find them. And should the state and regional, regional entities ever host meetings again in person, I will continue to attend and advocate for Sterling's interests. So that's my work program for the year. Any questions? That's all? Yeah. <laughs> John, any questions for Stephen? I would think number four might be the most maybe high priority, although there's no, that's the uh, performance zone and the table uses for commercial industrial. I know there's no deadline on that, but I would think that rewriting some of these or updating them is... Yeah, it's a biggie. It's going to take a lot of time. It's, it's a crucial to be done, though. It has to be done, you know, along with the planning board stuff. Um, no, it's a great list. Uh, again, <laughs> I guess prioritizing is it'll it'll that's an ongoing thing too. Things will probably move around quite a bit because some of these some of these are a lot longer than one year. <clears throat> the only other thing I, I meant I was going to just talk to you, but I haven't had a chance to stop in. So I don't know why Christmas holidays, but uh, long term, I don't know if you probably want to have a chat with uh, Ryan over at DPW regarding. Uh, uh, a long-term water supply option for our town. I think it's something we've been kicking around for a few years. And uh, with the, I know we get the Crawley Roll, we have the wells, and I think we're good for the short term. But uh, Kama handed me a document. It goes back about 139 years to uh, colonial time. Now it goes back uh, back to almost to about 1970, was it, Kama? 75. And it was a bill that our uh, our uh, <coughs> predecessors have put together regarding, uh, got as far as uh, the legislature in Boston, regarding a, a potential tie-in to the Wachusett Reservoir at, at some point, with no, obviously with no cost. And I handed that to our uh, state rep last week. Should have done it two weeks ago, but I forgot, but I got it to her. So I'm going to be asking her to check it to see if it died on the vine. I think it probably did. Nothing ever happened. But all the uh, local reps at the time, the board of selectmen, everybody had signed off on it. And so they obviously thought back 50, 60 years ago that, you know, the water supply, pretty important thing in every community. And uh, I've often thought, that, you know, there's got to be some a uh, avenue to do that if we absolutely need to. It's probably obviously something we don't need in the next five or ten years. But I think long term, if we have access to it, 
maybe get the ball rolling and looking at it. That, you know, just just a thought. I think Ryan might be interested in talking. I know it's not nothing going to happen immediately, but if I find out more about that, what happened to yeah, that please, bill? Yeah, please, please let me I'll know. I'll let you know, but I, you know. I'll be glad to work with Ryan on that. I've met with him a handful of times already, talking about various issues, um, your aquifer or your groundwater protection district and how that impacts zoning um, and his thoughts on that. So uh, I'm sure we, we'll, we'll work together on that. If we the wiki peaky is something that we have, it's probably more doable, but I mean, even that has obstacles to it uh, between the two towns, the reservoir up here, uh, uh, north of town and towards Leminster. Uh, what the heck, uh, Haywood Road. Uh, yeah, wiki peaky, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, Clinton owns that land. I just talked to the Clinton town planner last week. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're not willing to I was going to say, did he want to talk to you? Because <laughs> usually not. Uh, well, you know, uh, we, we had a nice conversation. Um, he wants to, to get together sometime in the new year to talk about um, zoning in our southeast corner. Yeah. Um, and some options that could open up that area for development. So I'll, I'm all on board for that. But I was talking with them about um, perhaps selling us the Wiki Peaky yeah. properties yeah. Uh, for recreation and trails. But um, no, they like to hold on to them. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, Other questions? David? Yeah, so I just have a question on uh, the multifamily zoning overlay district. If such a district would be created, um, does that change the assessment on the existing houses that are within that? Would there be any change to it? Um, I don't know the answer to, the, to that question without talking to the assessor. We are looking at two vacant properties along um, that North Row Road. Yeah. So uh, two properties that are vacant, they're in chapter, uh, they're in the chapter program. Um, but I do know that the trust that owns them has come to town asking about how much they would pay in rollback taxes should they ever develop those properties. So they're two properties under the same ownership. Um, we may have to expand and take in another property once we go through the applying the state's suitability model, which is the next topic uh, on my agenda with you. But if you've got any further questions on my work program, let's get those out of the way. Okay, I just have, um, and this goes along with the, the note you sent, uh, Stephen. I missed the Economic Development Committee meeting where they're thinking of asking for $10,000 to study our performance zone. Um, that's really not an EDC scenario that would come from the planning board, and you already have it on your list. If they're talking about the particular performance zone up on 140, we already took that to town meeting and got shot down once. Not that we can't go back again, oh. but the money is my question. $10,000 increase the... Um, and I'll bring it up to them at the next meeting, but I, I don't know. Were you there when they talked about the 10000 No, I wasn't. So I'm not sure what kind of study they have in mind for the performance district. Um, but whatever they'd like to study out there, there's a very high possibility that mass development would fund such a study through their site readiness grant program. Now we, in, West, in Westminster, we availed ourselves of that grant program in 2018 to size up the infrastructure needs of our two main industrial districts. And as part of that, they did a regional market analysis, which essentially told us what industries are scouting our area and what they need for access, land, and infrastructure. So I've sent that report to both the planning board and the EDC. Um, but if there's something else they want to study out there, I would suggest we invite someone from Mass Development to come out and see if they could help us with the funding and the expertise. 
but again, I go back to it's not really an economic development. Um, they're just a committee. <laughs> you know, it's it's like they don't. Ten thousand dollars is a lot of money for something that should be under the purview of the planning board, pretty much. I, I won't argue that point. Come on. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's something that we should bring up at our next EDC meeting. Um, I, I couldn't make the last one, but um, I don't think Mr. King would think that was a great idea either. Would you, Mr. King? I scrutinized the budget proposal a, a lot. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm fine, Stephen. I, I appreciate all of what you've done so far. I know, you know, you've been here a whole two months, and it's uh, been a lot of learning, I'm sure. Well, this is something I plan on doing every January, stopping in here, briefing you on what I plan to do for the upcoming year. Um, I may come back in the summer just to give you an update on Oh, absolutely. Soon. We want to see you more than that. Um, updates are always welcomed from any, and actually at one point before the whole COVID hit, we'd ask different departments to come in and give us updates on what they're doing, uh, what they need, and how we can help them move forward. So, um, we'll see you again. Speaking of helping me move forward. Oh, damn it. <laughs> um, I'm going to need you to sign a letter requesting District Local Technical Assistance from the yes. Regional Planning Commission. I've got that right here. Um, they will help us move this MBTA zoning issue along. Mm -hmm. um, they will help us run the state suitability model. There's about 50 factors that you have to punch into the computer program and it'll spit back the density and whether it meets what you're supposed to have or not. So um, I want to work with them on that. They will prepare the ultimate map of the new district um, that I'll use for public presentations and town meeting. Um, and they'll also provide us with the state model zoning bylaw that is currently uh, in the works. Um, I'm going to revise it based on what I think Sterling um, wants, um, but we'll have them take a look at it to make sure it doesn't run afoul of the state model. So that's essentially my DLTA request to the Regional Planning Commission. Okay. I hope you see fit to uh, approve it. I'm always happy to um, work with the MRPC as far as any of this DLTA grant business. So we don't have a cost on that at all yet? No, it, there's no cost to us. It's, it's, it's oh, not a 50-50? No, or, no. Oh, even better. Sure, here you go. That is uh, state money that they allot to the regional planning commissions right. across the state use that fund them to help towns like ours um, with, with their zoning issues. Yeah, just in the past that we, we've had to do some matching funds. So, you tell me we got screwed? Well, the state created this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. This almost is... a couple of bucks to f fix it. All right, well then, I would entertain a motion that we approve um, uh, Mr. Wallace to move forward with uh, the MRPC as far as the DLTA grant. Why for the so moved. Second. All those in favor? Coin aye. Smith aye. Branson aye. All Thank right. You, Thank, Thank you, you. Stephen. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Okay, so that's that. Um, okay. The recreation and roadways for April 8th. Uh, is next on our agenda. It's um, pretty much the same thing that we've done for the last few years. Uh, yep. And Sherry's been very efficient as far as checking with all the entities that need to be checked with. As police, far as the fire, school, huh? police, fire, all that. And um, 
signage is all set, ready to roll. So that's actually uh, Saturday, April 8th. Uh, they start at Griffin Road, and it's a 5K and a 10K. Leave about 9 o'clock. Um, runners and walkers are both, both welcome. And people will see it publicized as we move forward. I'm well, sure. The difference I can remember from, uh, the, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I think I walked it last year, was uh, the 10K thing when they uh, left or took a right on uh, down Greenland, uh, the Greenland Road, and they took a right up to, uh, well, it's on here, uh, up to 60, 62. Yeah. And instead of reversing back and coming back down the same road to the, to the uh, Griffin Road, they're going up 62 yeah. down the bottom of the hill and taking a right on Jewett Road. So, I, again, Saturday morning, you know, 9, 10 o'clock, I don't think there's a lot of cars that go by it at that point. But that's where the, I think... Well, it's a wide road, though, and they have plenty of room on the right-hand side, so I don't think there's a lot of police presence. But they've got it. I mean, you know, the chief knows about it, and I think has approved all this. So that was the only major difference I saw in the uh, the route itself, that uh, there could be a little more traffic on that, but they have it in here. I, I, again, I have no problem with it. They just bring it up for something to say. Unless you guys had an issue with it. That was the only major thing. Super. Yeah, I'm all set with it. Um, yeah. No concerns. Then I would entertain a motion to approve the plan that the recreation has in place. Uh, it's the safety plan for the uh, recreation road race on April 8th. So moved. All those, yeah. All those in favor? Coin I. Kill me. Um... <laughs> All right, and the Eagle Scout project, uh, we don't have anybody to present that. It's a very in-depth plan, yeah. and it's actually to, um, it's presented by, or put in here by Charles Smith, and it's to refurbish the um, Sterling Memorial Park bandstand or gazebo so um, anybody have any questions on that or yeah my only comment uh, is that uh, hopefully it's ready by uh, the Memorial Day services that's all because I think somewhere here it said it would be done by April or May and I think that that should be emphasized to the scouting uh, to the Eagle Scout and, and the sponsor of that uh, Hopefully it's, you know, of course weather could be an issue, but as long as it's, the bulk of it is done by May for the Memorial Day thing, I think there's no problem with it at all. Well, I think the whole project will depend on whether and availability of product yeah. would be what it is, but certainly welcome. Oh, yeah, it's definitely needed. The service project. I know that the Eagle Scouts are look, often looking for service projects. You do a great job with it, too. A anything from you, Mr. No, Smith? No, I'd like to see this uh, get done by the scouts. I think it's a good project. So, I'm all for entertaining a motion to approve the Eagle Scout project to refurbish the bandstand at Memorial Park. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Kilko and I. Smith, I. Grants and I. And we have all the paperwork from Mr. Smith right in our in our binders. So um, I'd like to go back to uh, the beginning as far as approval of the minutes. Uh, Rather, Madam Chair, and I'd like to make a motion that we approve the select board minutes for the town of Sterling for December 21st, 2022, without change. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Coin and I. Smith, I. Prance and I. Okay. And then we have um, the town administrator's report. Sure. Just a few things. It's obviously been fairly quiet because of the two holidays, but uh, we have finalized the contract for the roof on this building, so hopefully in the spring we can start construction um, and get that replaced. <laughs> you know, it's been a fairly long um, overdue project. 
Um, I'm going to get to the other thing. Uh, we have the agreement with West Boylston will be on our next agenda for the building commissioner. They've signed off on it, um, so it'll be in our packets and agenda next month. We are finally done with it. Thank God. Yep. Uh, budget requests, uh, with the exception of a couple of them, because uh, their board meets next week, uh, should have all of those things in by the end of the week. Um, so then we'll start putting it all together, seeing how it looks, and then a couple weeks after that we'll start meeting with the uh, Finance Committee and, and finishing up the capital side of things as we uh, move forward through the season and start putting the warrant together. Um, we have applied for the state funds for the playground, uh, that economic development bill uh, passed, so we have that in, hoping to get the money early, or either late January or early February. Um, I'm guessing most people have seen their, or got their um, quarter three and four uh, tax bills in. Um, quarters one and two were two and a half percent over uh, the previous year. Three and four, the actuals based on the town meeting vote and properties assessed at January 1st as the uh, assessors came in, a, I don't know, about a month ago and explained to us. Um, so this would be the actual based on what was approved at town meeting. Um, and the new assessments, so some of that offsets the other. Yeah. Uh, they are based on the previous January 1st valuations. Um, and then the other thing that's in your packet is the letter from Weston and Sampson. We received the grant funds on the small or rural and small town community grant program um, through our community one-stop application. So obviously that is one of the bigger projects that we're looking toward and basically it is between 62 and the Route 12 or the two sections of 62 uh, here out on Route 12 and the common area. Uh, I guess three of the big ideas are pedestrian and road traffic safety, improving and increasing parking and a little bit of a beautification part to it. Obviously this has been going on for, I don't know, four or five iterations and I don't know, 20 or so years. I think the first one I saw was 99, maybe. That sounds familiar. 2007 um, is when we took it off the shelf. I've definitely seen 2007, too. So, so this time last year, Weston and Sampson came in with the original proposal, which would kind of talk about the above-ground work, sidewalks, roadway, uh, burying the utilities, Verizon, um, Comcast, and SMLD work. Um, so that obviously is still a part of it. We have that approved. The funding is there. Uh, the grant funding that we got for $135,000 would be to uh, do the design and engineering for the underground infrastructure, the water main, and what drainage goes through downtown. So there's a few different tasks that go through there. The water main, the drainage, the parking, the sidewalks, the roadway, <laughs> and lighting. Uh, so that's obviously, you know, pretty much what it is. So they have done the majority of task one, which is update the base plans and field investigation. Um, what do we have? Where is it? Um, obviously they're adding in the um, water main and, and drainage to that. Um, looking at what we have, where things are, how that's going to affect the project. Um, through the spring, and if you have your last sheet in there, kind of tells you what Things are going to go on the preliminary design through the end of this month, or through this month in through probably the end of April. We'll look at the preliminary design, um, both the horizontal and uh, vertical items, so above and below ground. The lighting design, which SMLD does, but they need where our things are going to be also. The watershed analysis and pipe sizing. Um, what's going to be best for the town and as we start looking at where the water goes um, and also where the water main is, you know, obviously it hasn't been replaced in, I don't know, probably 100 years. Um, we don't want to be doing a project above ground and have to re-dig everything up because, you know, a 100-year-old water main breaks. Um, in there, probably the month of May, maybe even into early June, the town would... Um, review the preliminary design, review with the uh, architects, engineers, what we need, what we like, what we don't like, um, what needs to change, and then move in through the summer into final design, 
uh, that should probably go into the beginning of November uh, based on their plan and then they would you know try to finalize that work on the bid documents um, it would be my hope that we can use some of the remaining ARPA money uh, to at least start things coming out of the or going into the next construction season in, in early 2024 um, they would help us with the bid documents the bidding services uh, including the advertising the bidding the reference checks um, helping to get the contract awarded um, which is obviously our part but you know what we what we need to do there and then looking at the construction administration so um, between the ARPA funds I know the water department plans on doing another borrowing um, it won't be this town meeting the next town meeting for water main stuff which they may use a portion of that which would help us along and then if we were able to get a MassWorks grant should we get through all the MBTA and adjacent community things um, that might be able to offset because we're going to be using some of our money as part of it um, you know we may actually see this project come to fruition and actually finish okay. so if you have uh, any questions on this I can get them back to Weston and Sampson if we don't um, we could get that signed and return to them so they can start working on the preliminary design um, the back pages at the cost, um, so it has the grant in there, the additional fee, and also the revised original fee because there is a timeline on the grant funding. Uh, we wanted to front load the grant funding portion of it so that comes out earlier than, than not. And that would be the, the total design fee. Um, task seven in there would be representative services for engineering. Um, that's probably not the way we're going to go um, but at least it's in there for budgeting purposes. So, yeah, that was a significant little increase for the. Uh, is that like the clerk of the works or something? Uh, yeah, it'd be basically an on-site engineer. So it would probably behoove the town either if, as a temporary hire to hire an engineer or yeah. use them. But you know, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for them here for the construction doesn't seem, you know. Yeah, that seems high. Technically good. That seems a little high, but. Um, so where you're doing all the underground things, utilities, drainage, you definitely want somebody that yep. knows what's going on with it. Well, they did say they provide one full-time resident representative to observe construction of the project. Now, is that that's built in, I think. That's number seven, right, resident representative? It's for budgeting purposes only at this point. That's not part of the uh, okay. design and, and anything else. We'd have to elect to that later. Okay, but up top, number six, it does say... Uh, it does say we'll not produce a full-time resident engineer, but will periodic visits during the construction, 24 site visits, yep. review and approve shop drawings, responses to requests for information, better con et cetera, assistance to the town, in the approval of contractor pay record. So I think they've, they're extremely detailed, uh, and I think they're, they've got a handle on this whole thing. I think you're right. We'll have to take a look to see do we want an additional uh, local uh, I don't know, professional contractor, so it's, you know, it's just kind of serve as a part-time, yeah. some part-time oversight to us. We'll, we'll, that's down the road. The only other thought, I mean, this is a good look, little timeline, again, as you said, Maureen, I know people want it done tomorrow, but I mean, these things have to play themselves out. There's a lot of design, there's a lot of feedback they're going to get. All, most of the feedback for the final, uh, not the preliminary, the final design, Looks like it has to happen between January of 2023 and April of this year. Is that, is that a correct statement? or uh... So they would be doing, the blue stuff is, is their work, getting all the information and the preliminary design done. Our piece would be in May, which would, you know, Ryan, uh, if Sean is still there, the new, new director at SMLD, select board, whatever input we have if we need to change anything based on their initial designs. Yeah. So when, when will we have to identify final funding for this thing? Uh, looks like construction doesn't begin until uh, it would not be this March of 2025. So we have some time on this, but uh, 20, 24 construction season. Yeah. I'm sorry. Tw 
Uh, you're, you're 20, 20, yeah. well, March of uh, 2024. I'm sorry. Okay, so that's coming up pretty quick. One year is not that far down a road for a project like this. No. So, yeah. all right. I know we have various sources, so I guess the thing you can write, and, and the grants could fact will hopefully will factor into it as well. So, mm -hmm. all right. Whew, that's a lot. That's a lot. But maybe that's your legacy, John. David? It's not going to get any cheaper. No, no, that's for sure. Push this off, the more it's going to cost. It's a project that needs to get done. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and also, if we're involved with Mass Works, which we haven't been right along. I mean, nobody's ever put us into that little queue. Um, they're very much interested in infrastructure and downtown revitalization, et cetera, and so on. So, you know, we've had the representatives at the ADC meetings, and they all voice the same opinion, you know, get involved with Mass Works. So, and one, of the, one of the scoring criteria is what a town can provide on their end as well. So if we're putting up, you know, X amount of dollars, it, it's a lot easier to sell to put whatever we're asking for in there as well. We'll give them 12. Maybe 13. Well, there's in-kind work, too. Like SMLD has uh, full intentions of doing their portion in right. DPW. And, in kind. And their portion is, is good to go. We have the funding through ARPA and town funds for Comcast and Verizon. So when we get to the point of ready to do the underground, um, removing the poles and burying that, um, that is all ready to go and funded unless right. a cost adjustment happens. Yeah. Good job. <coughs> Sounds good. Good job. Okay. Mr. King, you have anything for us? Uh, no, nothing new since the holidays. We're still at six and six, so we are recruitment drive work, and we're almost full staff. Okay. We're ready and raring to go once, uh, I think Bill said somewhere around the 13th, we get the first glimpse of the budget. Yeah. And then we have a schedule laid out to meet with the various departments at the end of January. So. Well, Austin's doing all of them, right? In lieu of doing the March uh, all-day session, we're going to have them... Two, two sessions at the end of January is what the plan is right now. We're going to plan two evening meetings with the various departments. Bill's helping us coordinate who's going to attend each one. We'll review the budget submittals from each department at each one of those two meetings. And that'll be in lieu of that kind of all-day session that we had last year in March. Well, the benefit of having that is it, it's filmed, for one thing, um, and it gives the community the sense of what's going on, because they don't actually show up physically. Um, you know, and then they can check it on the live stream. So that's the benefit of having they plan that on done. And it, the yeah. daytime thing, I suppose an evening for a department head versus a Saturday doesn't make a big difference. But the other thing, too, to keep in mind, whether it be you or Christopher, um, usually do a presentation with SLCT as, you know, once you get the budget in line. So it would be somebody from finance with the town administrator and possibly somebody from the board. Okay. We're not committed that, to that. That may be good for March. What, we, what we're talking about was doing that earlier so that we can see it out of the gate as opposed to right. after everything's already been approved. Yeah. Doing the March taping might be good. You know, this is what we're actually presenting. Yeah. March. And that way, you know, departments can come in, answer any questions that the board has early, as opposed to later on. Yeah. Our main goal is to try and move the whole schedule up as soon as we can. Yeah, and get the whole, the whole warrant actually yeah. out as early as possible. Okay. Kama. I, it's my understanding that the board does agree with the West and the Sanson um, proposal. Could you please vote to sign off on that agreement so, yeah. so that we can send it? I would entertain a motion to sign off on the Western and Sampson um, agreement. Uh, so moved. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Phil Coyne, aye. Smith, aye. Hanson, aye. All right. 
Anything from you, David, PSA was? I don't have anything, sorry. Okay, no, no sorries. Shortens the Just, meeting. Yeah, recovery. Great to ask the, the guy on my left. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, as you know, it's an election year. Five months well, seems like a long time, but it's really not. And just for all, I think it's fair to let people know that I don't plan on uh, running for re-election this year. So I'm hoping, I know, I know, I'm, I'm hoping that some good people uh, will, will come forward and just step up. Nine years has been a long time. Nine other years when FinCom was a long time. But if it happens the way I hope, then I, I don't plan to be invisible. I don't plan on running away. So I'd, I'd be happy to... Mr. King has a room on the FENCOM or uh, Ms. Shepard on Capitol or another committee. I'd be happy to uh, continue on and maybe a less, uh, little bit lesser role, that's all. Uh, but it's just kind of time. I've just been thinking about it, you know, eye and ear issues, all kinds of weird things. But I also want to play more golf and stuff like that, I'll be honest with you. But, uh, <laughs> but I don't, I really don't want to run, and I think that it's time for somebody, somebody hopefully, there are a lot of good people out in Sterling, and they just, I'm sure somebody will, will, will step forward, and I think it's just the evolution, you know, so, that's all. Happy New Year, and, uh, and that's that. So, I'll go to say later, if, if you give me time later. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Well. That's interesting, but I get where you're coming from and, no, and people, where you're going. And, they've got a and, month to think about it, take out papers, and uh, if they have any questions, I'll be happy to do my best to answer them and explain what times require, what's involved. And I'm sure you will, and Dave will, and I know Bill will too, so it's just a matter of uh, just letting people know well in advance, that's all. So. Okay, then. Mixed emotions about it, to be honest, but i uh, just got to make these calls every once in a while, you know. Fine then. Okay, I, I really don't have anything. It's been a couple of really interesting weeks <clears throat> with the holidays and everything, but I do wish everybody a happy new year and wish everybody good health and most importantly, be kind. Just be kind. Absolutely. And with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Kilcorn, aye. Smith, aye. France, and aye. Thank you.